So let's start with a little bit of honesty about this Uncharted series. Nathan Drake shoots a lot of people, and it's very, very encouraged. But when he dies, it's a very traumatic event. There's something creepy, naive, and American about him. He is like Zach Morris. He is a sociopath. There's no amount of evil or murder he can't be forgiven for by his friends because he's got a cool haircut. And that really bothers me. There's a huge disconnect between this game's and this series tone and its gameplay, and that's... it's... it's I, I, I feel like we ought to be able to do better than that, but the game is fun. The voiceover work is good. The game obviously has a huge budget. Set pieces are cool. I just wish that the protagonist wasn't such a absolute dick face. I don't, I don't know what his motivations are for killing all these people besides getting the tablet out of the cave of wherever. <laughs> So next up we have D. It is a first-person horror puzzle game from just after the Mist era. It is a complete piece of shit. Uh, you have two hours to complete this game. You should never play it because that's stupid. I'm sure it's to create tension. It does not. The look and aesthetic of the game are horrible. The voice work is horrible. The plot twist is hilarious because it is so stupid. And the bad voice work makes it even dumber. The plot centers around Lara, who is a young woman whose father, a doctor, has killed a bunch of people inside his Los Angeles hospital. The LAPD lets her into the hospital to check it out, negotiate. I don't know. I guess they don't really know what being police entails. Uh, piece of shit. Don't play this game. This is a racing game. If you've never heard of those, you take a vehicle around a track and try to to defeat the other vehicles that are going around a track. This game is quite fun, but it has like three tracks and four cars. There's no content at all. I like the dirt particles, though. They make me laugh. <laughs> Splatterhouse is a very old beat-em-up game. Sort of retro. It's the cool word for it now. Retro means, means old. And uh, in this case, not very good. It's, it's got a bunch of horror stuff in it. It's a beat-em-up game. Um, the monster designs are really repetitive. It's like a middle school with, like, long black hair. You know, like that kid. Like, this is like the game he would sketch in his notebook because his parents didn't like each other. And uh, there's some sort of plot uh, involving a mask, and it makes you, makes you mad, and you go look for your girlfriend... Uh, the last boss was cool looking. I didn't like this game. <laughs> Aladdin for the Genesis is the unanimous best version of a bunch of Aladdin games that came out. It has an item shop, which is amazing. You can buy things in a Genesis video game, an item shop. Like, it's not, like, advanced, you know? But it's still, it's pretty cool. Acclaim did not make this game. Acclaim made uh, a lot of games that tied in other IPs back in this era. There were a lot of IPs uh, borrowed for video games back then, and they were all terrible, but Aladdin, this Aladdin game is very good, and uh, it has the songs, especially the romantic one, which I like. And you can throw apples at the guards and ride the carpet. So this is the this is the forgotten yeah, main, main series Zelda title, which is stupid, because this game is pretty great. It has uh, a lot of innovation that I think is readily apparent in games like Skyrim, of all things. Uh, the world feels big, it's fun to explore, the plot centers around Zelda being asleep. Instead of kidnapped, you just have to wake her up with some sort of thing. You don't really have to hurry. If she was kidnapped, you gotta hurry, because, you know, they might, like, do weird stuff to her. But that's not the case, she's just sleeping there. So, gotta get on that. But the music is incredible. The NPCs are cool. It's got these really cool RPG upgrade systems. It's very primitive, but it is very worthwhile. It has a new game plus mode. There's a creepy game over screen. I really can't say enough uh, about how cool this game is. <laughs> Kid Icarus is a video game from the 80s uh, about a kid in a diaper who's an angel, maybe, apparently. He's got a Gotta help out somebody, probably, probably a girl, as you do back then, because we were all lonely. The game's horrible. You can jump from side to side. I don't think Pitt should have been allowed in Brawl, uh, or his own 
that Uprising game based on this. This is a shitty game. Before we begin on Altered Beast, which is an awesome game, I want to talk about Pay to Win. Pay to Win is a thing people whine about now when they shouldn't because arcade games were pay to win a long time ago and they're old so this is nothing new just stop buying stupid shit so altered beast is an arcade port and it involves some sort of greek myth where you're a guy and you've got to overcome you're basically kratos whatever except for you have an 80s haircut you're not bald and you punch stuff and eventually steroids pop out of them and you turn into a monster and uh, it's fun to be a monster. The last boss is a rhino man. Rhino dressed like a man, which was not the best way to end. But this game has way more fun to it than it has any right to be, given its age. Altered Beast can cuddle with me any day of the week. <laughs> Hate to break it to you. Hate to break it to you. Hate to break your uh, rose-colored goggles, but this game's kind of a piece of shit. It stars uh, Samus. Samus is our hero lady, but we don't know that yet in this game, because in this era of video games, it was a profound statement to replace a real video game ending at the end of a tedious fucking game like this with a revelation that the hero was a lady and that she should now stand in her 8-bit underwear. Game's tedious. It's not very good. It's the alpha to a much better game and series of games that came later. If you go back and try to play this game, um, you're going to discover that it sucks. It's it's not very good. I hate to break it to you, Nintendo kid from who's like 43 now, but your game's not very good, and it's patronizing. <laughs> Primal Rage is from the golden age of fighting games, which is kind of weird because it's so bad. It's about larger-than-life prehistoric gods who all look like they're four feet tall, uh, clawing at each other in a very obnoxiously complex set of special moves. There are only like seven characters. There are multiple palette swaps, which is so lazy it's offensive. Uh, there's a finishing move where an ape throws up and goes and eats his own throw up and it never touches his opponent. Uh, if you had a hand in making this game and you thought you were doing something good, you were wrong and I don't want you to make games for anyone anymore.